Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys, I'm Rob T by Hobbling Japan. And uh, as you can see on my desk, I got a, on my table here, I've got a pile of stuff. Yes, a lot of Gundam. A lot, of, a lot of Gundam, a lot of stuff came in. Yeah. I want to jump into it right now because uh, this is kind of in my way. Okay. So I want to talk about the uh, builder's parts from Bandai. Now for the longest time, Bandai wasn't uh, involved in the aftermarket parts market. That was mostly Kotobuki and Wave who were taking advantage of that. And I guess Bandai decided to get in on this good thing as more people are modeling their kits now than ever before. And what they've done is they've released the uh, the Builder series. Now they we've showed on the show before the, the guns and the weapons sets that they've released. Well now they've actually released parts such as you know hands and spikes and veneers or thrusters as they're called and even uh, effect parts. So uh, what I've got here, I have them in piles because basically they've got them one 144 scale and one 100 scale. So you can see here is the, the spikes, and I'll just flip the back of the 1100 round over. You can see how they've got these spikes laid out. There's three different types with three different bases, and uh, there's even little plugs you can put in there if you don't want spikes. You have like these little rivet plugs, and they're actually quite detailed for the size, which is uh, pretty good. You can use these on your Zakus and your Goose. Veneers is the same way, 1144 scale and 100s. Flipping these around, look at the different uh, designs they give you here. You have four different types and four of each. So you can create uh, whichever one you see fit. Slap that on the back of your uh, RX-782 or whichever Gundam has quite a few veneers. They come in uh, several different smaller parts so you can actually paint them up pretty well and detail them before you throw them on your kit. And the hands, we actually have quite a few. So here's hand set number two. You can see they've got it gripping rifles. This will attach to your uh, Gundam through the ball joint. No problem there. And uh, here's handset number one. Handset number one is more of the same, but slightly different designs when it comes to the fingers and such. And there's really a lot of detail in there. You can get in there with uh, some panel lines and bring out all the, the knuckle joint lines and things like that. It's pretty impressive. And then we got uh, effect parts for people who uh, want to make uh, dioramas and things like that. You, they're clear, so if you paint them with a clear red or clear blue or clear green, you'll be able to get the color you want with this effect part. As well, they've got this uh, sight lens. Now these are good for uh, rifle scopes, mono eyes on the Zakus and the Goose and the Maris eye, any other place that'll have these, these circular lens. And they come in quite a few sizes. I think 2.5 millimeter, four millimeter, 3.5, three and 5.5. So you get quite a, quite a selection in there. So you can detail up your Gundams with the new Builder series. Thanks Bandai. All right, moving on. We got some uh, some kits here. Here's the uh, the HG GXS Jack Edge. It's similar to that uh, Dark Hound one we saw before. You can see it's uh, very dark, dark. Very cool looking. Uh, very cool looking. It's got kind of the noir look to it, you know. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the, the Jesta, the, the Unicorn Jesta with these colors. Very similar. But uh, I mean, HG, only a couple of runners. But I'm liking this big shield though. I think that looks really awesome. And uh, enough of your foil stickers there. Gunnam Age fans can be happy if they get in their variant suits now. Sweet. And uh, the Barnaby Brooks Jr. from the Tiger and Bunny. Yeah, this is a very popular series oh, now. Yeah, it is it's huge. It's everywhere now. We showed the Wild Tiger when it came in. And now we're gonna, gonna have a look at the Barnaby Brooks Jr. Very similar to the uh, Wild Tiger, of course, but I mean, these figurines things are, uh, figurines, packed, packed full of stuff. Even with the, uh, you can see the uh, little marking seals on here and the, all the little foil stickers you got. You got this gold color here, similar to the Perfect Grade Strike Freedom. Clear parts as well. And look at the size of that boot. Look at that guy. He's huge. So, uh, more clear parts and water slide decals. These figure ice kits, they keep getting better and better and it's good to see them departing from just the, uh, just the uh, Cam and Rider stuff. We're starting to see these different animes. So it's gonna be interesting to see just what exactly Bandai has up their sleeves for the continuation of the, the figure eyes line. All right, so here's the one that everybody's excited for. Me too. <laughs> Came in a day late, but that's all right. It's well worth it. It's the uh, the next real grade, number nine in the series. It's still pretty young, but I'm glad we're it's moving along really fast here. It's the Justice Gun. Very cool. And like all uh, real grades, the box art is really well done. And all, this is just the kit. I mean, it's just posing the kit for you. Looks fantastic. God, I like the real grades. Flexible in a frame. 
more marking stickers than you know what you're going to do with. And of course, all the runners. Now, you can see that they've actually got uh, one, two, three, almost three different types of uh, colors for this pink. It kind of blends uh, really well with each other. You have to really look closely to see the difference. It's quite well done. And uh, like really, what they do is they give you this E-runner, which is actually armor parts as well, or for, sorry, frame parts as well. They combine with the uh, that flexible frame and then uh, you just put all the armor on top of it. And Ryan, we promised we would uh, show people these. It's a Dengeki Hobby. Yes. The September issue, here it is. And people want to see it because of these. This is the uh, Artemis parts. This nice. is, now for this you need to actually have the uh, age, was it the age two kit? Yeah. And uh, what you do with these things is you pull out the uh, included oh, runners nice. and this gives you what you need to convert your uh, kit into the Artemis. And uh, in the magazine, of course, it has the, uh, the instructions right here. What you need to do. Uh, you need to build your your own Artemis. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's bonuses awesome. like this are great. Yeah. Uh, this is how to detail it up and stuff, but it's actually yeah. It's also a great way to sell magazines. Oh, these. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. I mean, it's a pretty good racket because Bandai will make these parts, and uh, then they get so much exposure in these magazines, and people buy these magazines yeah. to get these extra parts, and then all the advertisers in there are happier. Happy. Happy, happy. Well, magazines are like dying in the West and they all need to adopt this policy of give us stuff with the magazine that's yeah. cool and we will buy your magazine. Japan is very good for that. Yeah. They love to give you extra stuff. That's one of the first things I noticed when I came over is when it comes to books and stuff, Japan is they're awesome, the stuff that they make. I did mention to a few model magazines that we advertise with, hey guys, why don't you start selling extras with your magazine? Yeah. But I guess it's all too hard. You gotta you know, make sure you can get all the stuff and. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you want to stay alive in this in, in the print world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I have a couple of things. Yes, to show. I know. That's yes. one of the things. Your turn, right? Okay. Cool. Uh, well, first up, we have the new Fireball. I always like these kits. I just wish they made them bigger. Like a mega size, right? <laughs> Can you imagine a mega <laughs> size? That'd be a pretty That'd be sold. awesome. Listen to Ryan. Yeah. Well, let's just take a quick look inside. Well, as per usual, you'll need to do a lot of painting. Mm -hmm. And a lot of detailing because this is crazy land yeah well generally the uh the fireball like the snowman before it is predominantly white in color so you can get away without painting it but you might want to you know add some markings in a 30th, 30th anniversary. anniversary sticker <laughs> yeah cute actually there you go you can put that on your car i shield. heart fireball oh i hate it when people say that <laughs> Inside. I use that all the time. What are you talking yes, about? It's, since high I heart, the all the MG time. Blitz, etc. Yeah. There was all one right. station cool. in Oz cool where decals, they man. said, I heart, like that was their tagline. And yeah. I was like, oh, talk about pandering. Yes. <laughs> We're in the internet age, Ryan. Yeah. But yeah, that's just uh, how to look if you doodle up. Okay. And uh, what, were we, what show were we at? Shizuoka. Yeah. Um, where they had like a huge variety of just all different mm -hmm. designs. And that's cool. I mean, if you're into that stuff, send me photos. Yeah, <laughs> send me people photos. who do Mac generally do it very, very yeah. well. So if you have any interesting photos of your Macs, yeah. email them to us or post them on Hobbylink TV. We would yeah. most appreciate it. What else you got? The next kid is uh, Yamato. Ah, uh, Yamato. Yeah. We saw this at the, uh, at the show. At the show, I think uh, they had Kishi Yama-sensei behind that little booth <laughs> talking about it. Um, yeah, I built the other one, the bigger one, the mm -hmm. one 500th. Yeah. And, uh, this, this looks very exciting. This is actually the, the 2199 version. Mm -hmm. I guess every sci-fi eventually hits that, you know. <laughs> the future is future? Yeah, the future is future. It's like Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how the kid looks from the side. I think this is, uh, looks like a very detailed What's kit. the scale on this again? One one thousand. Yeah, it's half of the one we just yeah. built. So it's quite small. I'm, yeah. I'm tempted to build this in some yeah. respects. Uh, it looks interesting. It looks like it actually uh, opens up or something. Am yeah. I wrong in assuming that? Yeah, look at all your gimmicks. It looks like there is a lot of gimmicks. So yeah. let's just take a look. Well, we mm -hmm. have our Yamato Red. Yeah, and it's quite a bit smaller, actually. I have a question. Does it include some kind of base which will allow you to uh, uh, stand it up? 
there's a clear part. Nice. Ah, uh, yes, there is a base ah, set. Ah, yeah, very nice. Just for you. Well done, well done. And, uh, yeah. That's Looks very like a pretty solid kit. Snap yeah. fit. A lot of pieces. Mm -hmm. um, exciting, small, if you're into that. That's what she said, or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, it actually shows what's inside. Okay. That's that stuff there. Wow. That's pretty cool. Never been a Yamato fan, but I think it does look cool. I, li I really like the ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm actually quite a fan of the uh, real Yamato, yeah. the one that sunk, that never got into battle. Um, <laughs> well, what could have been? Shame. That's why everybody loves it, eh? I wish they would like raise it from the depths, but I think they blew it up pretty, pretty good. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so that's that kit. You get a lot of pieces mm -hmm. in a small package. All right, so Ryan, looks like you're building a tank. That, you are correct, Sid. Yeehaw! Yeah. <laughs> well, I can actually, just hear the <laughs> hyping going on on the other side of the screen. Okay, but okay, the vast majority, well, not the vast majority, but most people voted for this baby. It is overwhelmingly voted in your favor. But a lot of people were also asking about this tank as well. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, there were actually a lot I of different opinions. I was not surprised. Yeah, well, it is called Gunplug TV. TV. Well, I'm quite excited to uh, actually build this kit. Yeah. And, um, it looks like a lot of other people are as well, so yeah. that's awesome. It's good uh, because, uh, you know, it's not your basic snap fit gun and model kit. So a lot no. of people, although they're aware of it, don't actually know what it entails. So it's good you're going to be showing it. Well, we'll just take a quick look inside. Mm -hmm. See what we got. Uh, we got a few uh, nickels. Yeah. We've actually got a little Water figure as well. Yeah. And somebody actually requested that we hand do some paint. hand painting, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> you get a few little clear parts. Um, you actually get rubber tracks. It's quite interesting. Wow. Rubber. Which is pretty cool. This pleases me. <laughs> <laughs> do you see the comment? Sexual innuendo doesn't work for you guys. <laughs> I saw that comment. Okay. Okay. All right. We never make we'll sexual that in your window anyway, but wow. Do we? I and uh, yeah, this is kind of the top of the tank, so it's going to be quite a sizable kit. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Another guy asked in comments, "Are you overcompensating for something?" Yes, yes. I am. My eyesight, because <laughs> I am blind. And <laughs> small kits are hard. I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Um. I'm very cool. excited. It will get started soon. Actually, I don't cool. think this will take me as long as the Falcon or anything. I hope not. It's not 800 parts, so if it does, then there's something wrong. A few people did uh, mention Brian and chatting to him about this yeah. kid and I will, because he is the, is the tank guy. Mm -hmm. um, Brian will be back on Boss Build soon as well, yeah. so Sweet. you can look forward to that. Cool. Uh, what are we going to look at next? Sit. We're going to look at uh, the real grade Justice, because people have been asking. Cool. Can't really talk about a real grade justice without comparing it to the hg oh. justice so here's the hg the remastered yeah. it comes with extra stickers and someone here uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look inside this box but i don't think it's going to compare to what's inside this box because what you get from this box is this thing whoa it's pretty wicked i'm going to park this guy over here you can see i have him half built because i want to talk about frames yeah now uh with the the justice basically you're getting these parts here which act as a frame. Which any any part that uh, is not supposed to be armor, like a joint, uh, elbow joint, knee joint, will be represented by these small frame parts. And that's all you really have for a frame because the poly caps are inside the uh, armor pieces and uh, you, you're not actually getting any kind of interior frame. But with the RG, this changed everything because what they did with this uh, one, 144 scale size is they gave you uh, the suit, but they gave you a frame and the frame you don't actually assemble to a point So here's uh, what I got to show here. So What you gonna that's do? That's a question I had said. Yeah, go was, ahead So was that small frame looks so complicated, but you just say you just cut it off? Like yeah, that's, that's not... the best part here. Let me uh, Let me open this baby up here. Basically, it's this Okay, so you're not assembling a very small what, frame. Hmm, what they've done is they've actually molded all the moving mechanisms together Oh, so they've okay. got like, I don't know, I do not know how they do this, but they have plastic, two types of plastic being molded in at the same time 
and done in such a way that when you remove it from the runner, it is actually able to bend, oh. right? And uh, this is the foot part as well. All I had to do with the foot part is just, is like this, just spin this up. This will cover, this will hold the ankle. Drop this in here like this. And uh, before I put the armor on, you always, uh, you want to just, just put it through its motions a little bit because it is a little stiff because it's just come from a mold just like this. And what you do is once you uh, put on the, the armor and things like that, then you put it together. And uh, the thing I really like about the real grade kits, aside from, you know, this cool frame, is that any visible, for the most part, any visible frame part is actually uh, a small piece that you can paint. So if you want to paint it first and then slap it onto your, your uh, flexible frame, you can do so. And then once you're done, you slap it on there. And the same goes for the, uh, the shoulder joints here. You have this thing, it's all ready to go. It's all, the joint is molded as part of the process. Like it's pretty That's awesome. Insane. And then just, you just plug it in. Plug it so in. So how long did it take you to put this together? That's the, that's the strange thing. Like when you look at the amount of pieces one of these kits has, you think, oh, just like a master rate, it's gonna take me, you know, quite a long time, a couple of days. But uh, this probably took me only a couple hours. Wow. Two or three hours, maybe. But that's because I did a, this as well. So I actually want to talk about this too. With this kit, I mean, whoop. So it's easy enough to uh, just drop everything in together with this and take apart because of the, how the frame is designed. And you get lots of flexibility as we've shown with that, that frame and the way these arm, armors slide when you start moving around is great. But with this guy, this is meant to sit on his back. And I've only done half because I'm doing my little half and half theme, so you can see here. When you uh, want to have him standing up, you just drop him into this position <laughs> here. Uh, and uh, this is actually, this is the only way it connects into his back. There's a little hole here and it just plugs in. Now, because this guy's kind of unbalanced because he's only half built here, he's going to have a tendency to lean. So uh, luckily for me, I can adjust the height of this thing and I can use this to help me hold up this guy oh. for now. It's incredible engineering. Yeah, actually. it's it's insane. Like the how how far real grade is advanced I really like the, the hobby. The different colors, like yep. just the slight tonal changes. Exactly. That's when they first did that with the RX seven eighty two, and it, you uh, you noticed right away like just how many armor pieces this thing has because they do the slight tones, and that was just white and white and white. This, of course, you've got these three kind of pinks as well here, and uh, don't forget that this guy is meant to ride this thing. Come on, baby. So what we can do, make sure I get this clear part on properly. Don't want to mess up. What you do is he has these, uh, this, if I can get a good camera angle here, he has this little flap here. You unfold this. And you can see this is where his foot goes. Now you can see this little thing sticking up here. I'll notice that little hollow in his foot right there. You're just gonna, put it in into the hollow, line it up and slide it towards the back and it will click in and hmm. basically like he's on there. He's going to stand. That's sweet. Yeah. Then the other foot will work the same way and then you can pose him on there. And this is able, it has a stand attachment so you can put it on the action base and you can have him flying this baby. Just like that. Push it in. There he is. He's ready to go on these move as well and these turrets move as well. Like, uh, just what this thing can do in a 1 144 scale kit. I I cannot get enough of them, Ryan. And also the price. Like, yeah, it's 2,500 yen. Yeah. Like that uh, Resil Defensor uh, HG kit we showed, which is really good because it can transform, that's 2,600 yen. And it's, the difference is not so much in the engineering. The difference is just in the amount of plastic because this one beats the HGs in engineering. And I can't get enough of RGs, Ryan. I cannot get enough I know, enough I said you are See, a junkie. As evidenced by, <laughs> no, I'm just bringing this out just to show people. It's not you're not able to purchase it on uh, online stores like HFJ because it does. It's only an event exclusive. This is from the Gundam <laughs> from Tokyo. So if you want to get one of these for yourself, you're gonna have to find it online somewhere. I think GintaKits.com has them, and I don't know anywhere else yet because they just came out a couple weeks ago on uh, at the uh, event. But uh, this is basically the RX-72, which we mentioned with the uh, the colors. But they give you different markings so it could uh, match that found at Gundam Front Tokyo and this stand. And this stand allows you to 
to pose it in that flying mode that you see. Here, this is probably the best shot. If you go to Gundam from Tokyo, you'll see this this flying mode, this guy here. Looks and you can sweet. actually you recreate it. It's, it's pretty wicked. It's basically yeah. just the RX-72 with this bonus parts, of course, because it has different stuff as well. So I have more RGs to build, and that makes oh. me one happy camper. I'm a happy gunfly right now. That's all I have to say. And now look at this mess. I'm going to have to clean it up. All right, Ryan. Now I've done playing with my... RG. For now, I'm going to get back to this as it's, soon as we turn off the camera. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what do we have for questions? Okay, well, I'm going to start with uh, just a few comments. Okay. Well, actually, no, the first is a question. Right. Please answer, Sid. <laughs> How do you beat Builder's Block I was building? Seven MGs at one time. <laughs> uh, okay, how do you beat Builder's Block? I was building seven MGs at one time. Mm -hmm. I gave up as I got almost sick and tired of it. I love building, but I haven't touched them in a good two months. Have you ever had Builder's Block and just put it off? That's a very yes. interesting question. Yes, I have. Uh, normally, people will, will just work on one kit, yeah. and they'll get what's called Weapons Block, is that they build it all, they have the kit. Okay, it's huge, it looks awesome, and now i got to build the rifle. Mm -hmm. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you know, and they go back and play with the kit a little bit more. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Builder's Block, like something like this, like. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Yeah. Like seven MGs at one time, yeah, you're probably not gonna need to touch a Gundam for a long time. Yeah. You know, you're getting your, your years worth in a matter of weeks. So uh, I think the max you would need to do is like two or three. That's what I usually have going on is two Take or three. Take it slow. Take it slow. If you think that you're just like not enjoying it and just slogging through it to get it done, and then just stop. Watch television, go see a movie, you know, go outside and play in the sun. Like the sun. Do something totally unrelated to Gunpla. And then you'll feel a little bit rejuvenated and you'll come back and ready to go. I mean, it's supposed to be a hobby, right? Don't overdo it. Yeah. Next, from Korean Music Lover 23. Haha. -ha, like this guy. Can't believe how much time <laughs> you guys took to answer my last question about K pop. Yep. How would you recommend stripping pain off apart? Is there any way to strip the pain off without damaging slash ruining the plastic? I've tried Ace Tone on a piece before and it just melted the plastic and made it brittle. Uh, acetone might be a little strong. You find oh, that yeah, in like, acetone. You Sorry. find that in, uh, <laughs> you know, nail polish room and stuff. Uh, probably the best bet is to use like Windex, win okay. window cleaner. Just, just drop the parts in a plate of that for like 24 hours or more, and then it should be able to. You should be able to take the paint off really easily once that does its okay. work. That seems to be the recommended course of action. Just use some window cleaner. Yeah, that was a good question about K-pop. I remember that. About it's a good discussion. Healthy discussion. There's always good things found in K-pop. <laughs> yes. Uh, it may sound cheesy, but when I heard my name included in the Q&A, I was dumbfounded. Thank you for the answer. I am new to Gunplan. Remember, in past episodes, you're doing tutorials. Have you done anything, any with a hand-painted Gundam? Mm. What would be better, hand-painting or spray painting? Sprue painting. Thanks again, and more power to Gunplan TV. You guys rock. By the way, great work, Earl M. Falcon. Thank you very much. Uh, good job, man. <laughs> Didn't mean to catch you up there with the Falcon. Um, hand painting seems to be the bottom of the, the ladder. Mm -hmm. You'll go hand painting and then people move to spray painting and then they move to airbrushing and things like that. However, that said, hand painting can allow you to do a lot of things that uh, air, uh, spray can will not allow you to do. Okay. You can actually get in there with the brush and do things. But the only problem becomes when you've got to do a large part and you have to go with the brush several strokes, usually you're going to see those strokes. You're not going to get that smooth look that you'll get with a uh, with a spray can or of course an airbrush airbrush so, so hand painting details figures you know things like that yeah of course it's probably the best way to go but uh i always just spray can everything it's really easy and if you need to mask you need to mask so. we'll talk more about that in a future episode next is from cake hey guys mm, really enjoy cake. your latest show <laughs> as for what ryan should build the shuttle and the strato fortress is far too easy for him the spinner has two little parts. To satisfy all the Gundam fan, definitely go with the Semovente. Is that how you say it? Yeah, I suppose so. The tank. Yeah, it sounds uh, Italian almost. Semovente. Everybody wanted to see the tank. And if he's going hard on painting, I would like to see the Akuyaku one. Go. That's the big tank? Yep. Yeah. Which is my favorite. <laughs> um, so, which one did you want me to answer, Sid? One, two, or three, all of them. Well, ask question one, and we'll go okay. from there. Have you been to the Gundam front, and can you explain a bit about booking ticket for that, please? I have been to the Gundam front. 
and uh, I cannot explain about booking tickets. It's it's a mess. Like uh, originally, they said that you have to via the internet reserve your tickets two months in advance, but that it was a lottery. So even yeah. if you reserved two months in advance, yeah. your name wasn't drawn. However, if uh, you have to do that within the the first five days of every month. However, after the fifteenth of every month, you can reserve two months in advance for not a lottery. See, I'm not. Uh-huh. It's Nobody can figure this out. I even asked the Japanese guy selling the tickets at the counter, like, can you explain this to me? He's like, well, he points at <laughs> this chart and he couldn't do a good job of explaining to me. And Sounds that, like that a said, good manager who uh, designed the system. That said, you can get tickets at the door if it's not busy because some people are booking and they have to get in line and they wait their turn and they have this little two-hour slot or something they can get in there to see that Gundam front exhibition and they're out. However, if there's space available, you can get tickets at the door. Okay. Like some people, they reserve their tickets two months in advance and they're allotted this time slot and then something happens and they can't make it. Okay. You know, so sometimes there's space available. Sweet. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Number two, uh, you know ASCII Media Works publishes a Gundam Kid catalog every now and then. Do you know when they will publish the next book, please? I do not know. Uh, last time they published the book was a couple years ago, I think, because they only had like the most recent PG at that time, which okay. I think was the old Rising. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest, but keep checking. Uh, I'll be in Japan because if it if they do put out another one, it's going to show up on our site for pre-order. So. Sweet. Question three: Do you know if Bandai release a catalog of all the kits they are selling? Please, kind of like Tamiya who brings us a catalog every year. Yeah, Tamiya does their catalog. Hasegawa does a yearly catalog. Most model makers will do a yearly catalog. Bandai, no. <laughs> Bandai's got so much stuff that it's just not feasible for them. They would have to do so many different catalogs. So I think that they just they just rely on their website to push uh, talk about scheduling and things like that. I like the Tamiya catalog. It looks so yeah, nice. It's really it's well such done. a nice. Yeah. I mean, if you've never seen a Tamiya catalog, I'd really yeah. recommend. We'll throw a couple links one. on the site for yeah. the catalogs. Generally, they're just for the year 2012, 2011, 2010, and they tend to go pretty early because they are telling you that the years worth of information in that in that one book, and uh, people get that to plan their ordering. And stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's really well yeah. done catalogs. Okay, hello Sid and Ryan, love the show. I have a question regarding flat coats. When I flat coat a model, is it okay if I have panel line and put on all the decals? And can I flat coat the entire model kit if already assembled, or should I individually spray each piece? Thanks in advance. Uh, you can do. Uh, let's start with the first part. Uh, after you've panel lined and decaled, you can spray flat coat if you like, or you can spray a gloss coat to protect the decals and then spray spray a flat coat, whichever you prefer. Um, as when it comes down to individual pieces or uh, a whole kit, what I tend to do is by assembly. So I'll do just just an arm, like all the arms. Once they're decoed and panel lined, I'll top coat just the arm. Really? And then the, the shoulders are separate, the leg, the feet are separate, the legs are separate, the torso and head are also separate. And then, then I can just put it together. The reason I do that is because uh, there's a lot of different angles that you need to mm-hmm. get at. And if I say I'm trying to spray top coat on the inside of this leg, this is, leg is in the way. But if I do the legs separately, not a problem. That said, if you've really done a lot of work on each kit, on each individual piece, you know, it's a work, something you spend a lot of time on, it might be your best bet to top coat each piece individually before putting it all together. Yeah, makes sense. Um, these are just a few comments from mm-hmm. the competition. Gundam Tank, this is from Depth Charge 87. <laughs> hey Sid, this is where you plan to slowly lure Ryan into Gundam kits. Isn't it, Sid? No, I don't need you in. No, you, Sid doesn't need to lure me into Gundam. I do He's already like built Gundam. a couple of Gundam bu- yeah. kits. He built the Mega Size, and that's all he talks about now. Yeah, I love the Mega Size. Do they have I that in Mega, mega size? size tank? Do they have that in Mega Size? Can you imagine a Mega Size oh, tank? Oh, he's in. Don't worry, he's in. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Zach who's sitting out there in Mega Size. Yeah. Zach. You haven't built that one no, yet. I have not. <laughs> do they have that in Mega Size? Oh, I, I, this is how I wanted to start the show. Build the Liger Zero Panzer. Mm-hmm. We can't. Yeah, I think that kit was sold out. Yeah, when I yeah. actually put, showed it last week, it had already sold out. We'd already sold out that batch. So you can't it's open a cool up. looking. It's, Zoids are awesome. Yeah. Zoids are awesome. This is from the Great Steve. A kit patch would be a police base bomber tank. <laughs> <laughs> a kit patch with all five of those kits? Yeah, that would be awesome. If I had the skill and the ability, it could be pretty sweet. Or it could be the most horrendous thing you've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, this is from the Korean style. Well, my motto is that I always go with what I love first. So since you love Blade Runner so much, I'd go with the spinner. Trust me, when you have the model in front of you while you're watching this stuff, it is freaking awesome. 
That's a great That's a point. Really good However, point. Ryan put it up for your choice. Yeah. So whatever Ryan loves or doesn't love is irrelevant. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. The kits I chose were kits I was interested in. Yeah. So I'm not particularly hurt. I'm sure I'll do the spinner at some stage as well. Yeah. Uh, next is from Luke. Hey Ryan and Sid, love your show. I saw it once and got hooked. I was wondering, will you guys be attending the convention in Florida? No, we will not. But not Scott and Brian will be there selling a bunch of armor stuff. Yeah. A bunch. So if we've already shipped all the stuff out there. Yeah. They're setting it up boxes. right now. Yeah. So it's IPMS USA. If you're in the area, please go say We're hello. We're selling Gundam and model, uh, robot mecha kits as well. So Make say to Scott. Now. Hey, I love Gunpla TV. Yeah. I love Ryan and Sid. Those Next guys are great. Send those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> uh, this is from Facebook. Uh, Pablo Sonen. Mm -hmm. Ryan, build this one. I want to see a pink panther fly. Dude, I just love it's that comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from Romance Canoe. Mm. I think. All right. Uh, he says, definitely the pig tank. Second choice, perhaps the Gundam tank, but I really want to see some of the painting techniques that Ryan will try. Um, Sid, mm -hmm. can't wait to see you start building the pre-2000 kit. I've been wondering mm -hmm. for a long time if I get one of those MGs as some models were not 2.0. 2 mm -hmm. And I have a general question. In terms of time and complexity, how does a real grade scale to an MG? All right, now this... Uh this we touched upon when I talked about the uh, the rear grade just a bit. Uh, in terms of complexity, of course, the master grade is just it's more parts and it's bigger. But the reason it's, it has more parts is because you're building the frame. And with the uh, RG, the frame is pretty much assembled for you. You just have to cut it off the runner. But uh, when it comes to like armor and gimmicks, I mean the the RG matches the PG almost perfectly. It can't do some of the things that the P MG can due to size constraints, but uh, when it comes to like detail in the armor, panel lines, and the amount of pieces you're, you're working with, uh, the RG in the, is very comparable to the MG. It just takes up less space. Yeah. And it's less expensive. I mean, the <laughs> MG Infinite Justice, which we showed here on the show, was what, a 5,000 yen kit. This is half the price, and it's pretty much the same kit, just in a different scale. Like You can do all the things you can do with the Infinite Justice with this thing. Yeah. Good point. MG well, baby. that's questions today, Sid. All right. Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. So that uh, brings this episode to a close then. I guess in the next episode, Ryan's going to be taking an even closer look at that tank. Yes. If I actually start building this thing. And uh, yeah, check out Facebook and uh, Hobbylink TV to yeah. see closer photos of the RG kit Sid has been Just, doing. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, okay. if, so if you're interested in Wonderfest, we're going to post a lot of photos from Wonderfest yep. that recently happened. So have a look at that. Yep. Right. Anything else we need to pump? Uh, end of August, I think there is going to be a Gunpla event in Makahari at Messe, and I don't oh, know nice. yet if we are going to be taking a camera, a video camera, but I, hopefully I can go and at least get some stills. Yeah, we'll see what awesome. we can do. And uh, when whatever we get, we'll show on an upcoming episode. And I haven't forgotten my falcon. Sorry, the weather has just been horrendously hot, and I can't work it's inside terrible. at the moment. It's so. terrible. Yeah, it is. People you are dying no over here. Yes. We're, we're laughing, It's like 38 but it's degrees in the town next to us, like 100% humidity yeah. or something. It's yeah, I, I think insane. so far this year, there's been over 10,000 people admitted to the hospital for mm -hmm. stroke conditions. And uh, I think 50 deaths so far. It's so I've been looking at apartments, and I won't even look in an apartment unless they have like aircon in every room. Because <laughs> you have to live in your lounge if you only have aircon in your I lounge. I only have aircon downstairs <laughs> in my living room, and that's where I sleep every night now. In my living room on the floor. Yeah, I'm sleeping in my living room. That's yeah. right. <laughs> For two months of the year. That's right. All right, let's stop talking yeah, about yeah. the horrendous conditions <laughs> we find ourselves in. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode of Gumbo TV. See you guys. Later.